um, sharing the film with us. And uh, so we'll have a discussion about, uh, you know, we'll have a conversation about the film. I'm watching this film uh, for the third time. It's always difficult to start a conversation about, you know, this film. Um, so um, I'm going to begin by asking you about, um, you know, so many years later, you know, really so many years later, it's what I find remarkable um, looking back at this film is um, the kind of access that you all have to the subject, you know, which is something which is, 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 is it's a very different media scape that we're looking at. And when we are looking at a film like this, um, it becomes a frame with which we look at the kind of uh, politics and the kind of political propaganda we are exposed to in the present day. Um, what we're also leading to the next session after this is the uh, films division film, you know. So talking about how the state is trying to inform opinions, how then later in the 70s and 80s and 90s, how the independent filmmakers are countering the state propaganda. And then once your media gets uh, privatized, then it's a completely different scene altogether. It becomes a very important um, moment. It becomes a very important act of, of recording. Of, of recording testimony of things which would otherwise be completely wiped out. Um, so how do you look at it, you know, especially after the restoration and everything and, and, and the film having been, been given a second lease, um, how do you look back at this moment of almost 40 years ago, 35 years ago? Yes. No, I think it's very, um, I mean, I must say that when I saw the film, which is about uh, 26 years later, when we actually got a, a movie file, um, it's a very strange experience, no? because you're looking at something um, that you did as, as a very young person, firstly. You're looking at a version of yourself. I mean, uh, what were you thinking? You know, what were you filming? Where, where were, why were you asking the questions you were asking? I mean, why did you put it together like that? So the first response is, is it's also like that. You know, like I saw it and I said, if I had to do it today, I, I just want to re-edit it at once. You know? I mean, the, and I don't say that um, lightly, you know. And then I started exploring why I had that kind of reaction. And I think it's because uh, who you, who, I mean, one has become eh, after all this time. Um, see, at the moment that we did it, I think um, it was really quite a bit from a position of um, anger. There was a lot of anger. And there was a, a way in which uh, my love for the city and uh, for the people of the old city and for a Hyderabad, I knew that had disappeared, you know, that had uh, collapsed. And at that point, I think the idea was also that you can make a film that can be screened in the city and screened in the old city. I think that was very clear to us that the objective of making this film was, uh, and there was a group that was working at that time called Hyderabad Ekta, which was uh, working in a sense to bring people together. So. All our discussions after filming, even during the edit, I mean, they were very much part of this in the sense of how can we really work with this film? So the film had all these agendas. You know? And then there was the other thing where uh, how much history do you put in? This is not just an event that happened in 1980, but how do you talk about the past? How do you talk about police action? How do you talk about 1948? And it's so interesting that uh, today, actually, um, not today, but I mean in the last two years, there have been so many historical uh, documents that have emerged uh, about police action, about that time, and the kind of role that uh, various groups played in that. So I think the film had a, a terrific um, responsibility and burden of, of carrying all this, you know. And the other thing was that you, because we were working in 16, you know, funds were so tight and the idea that you'll ever make a film again seemed just so hard, you know. So put everything in because you, you don't know when that opportunity you're going to get. So I think the, the film had to carry a lot. Mm, the other thing is that uh, it was very difficult because as I said, the riots began 
And then what we were doing is just going into the old city every single day and, and just filming, right? So this idea of having an agenda, a very clear cut uh, script in your head or a kind of agenda or what, where this was heading, and you, it's so emotional, no? You walk into a place, I mean, and it was very painful because all the time you're seeing people who've been attacked or who, are, who have, are barely surviving or people who've been killed, very difficult every day to look at this kind of thing and respond to this, no? Um, and then getting access to these two politicians, sure. right? Um, and that, of course, you have to do through, you know, very special introductions, all that kind of thing. But I was, and I, I'm a, one thing I must say that when I saw it, I was quite struck by how open they were actually. You know, they were, and I don't know in today's landscape when you know in this climate of stings and what's happening on channels and people know exactly how they're sounding and, uh, you know, I don't know today if people would give interviews quite in this kind of way. And especially OVC. I mean, Narendra was a... He, he, but OVC was very relaxed, very open. And I have had a lot of material with him, you know, when he spoke. Um, and that would have changed. But yeah, so my in, in initial response was really... It's like you look at the first draft of a novel or a book or something, no? That you've done 20, 30 years later. And so you may have issues with the content, you may have issues with formally how you treated things, you may have issues with why did you take that kind of tone, for example. Um, and I think the biggest problem I have really is with that poem at the end. Because um, I think at the time, um, you know, Sarveshwar Dayal Saxena, I don't know if some of you uh, have heard of this play Bakri. Uh, are you aware? I mean, he was, well, he was a basically uh, a CPM... Uh, poet and um, writer and dramatist and he became very famous post-emergency with this play called Bakri in any case. So a lot of his um, writing, a lot of his, uh, whether it was in uh, prose or in poetry was something that, you know, we had heard even as, um, even in the 76, 77, this was very much part of our, uh, if you like, political landscape, right? Yeah. Now, at the end of the film, uh, to put in that kind of poem, you know, is just, um, it appalls me, frankly, today, because I think this appeal uh, to, you know, it's not an appeal to violence, but it's definitely not a, an appeal to forgiving or healing, right? And it generates a kind of feeling of retribution, whether you like it or not. And so, it's things like this, you know, but the thing is, I can't revise my history. I did it. I have to be responsible for what we did then. And, uh, and it is an archival artifact that can't be changed. So if it's going to be an artifact, it has to be as it is. You know? um, so we, we have to be responsible to that. But if these were my kind of uh, emotions. The other thing, of course, that uh, totally stunned me was that um, and I looked at that Ganesh procession footage and you, you know, you look at the slogans and you look at the kind of speeches and things and, and so in 92 when Babri Masjid fell, I mean, it's all there. It's right there. You can see just exactly what they were deploying, the language, the, uh, the clothing, the slogans, the, you know, and it's very hard. You can be in a moment and not know what it means. I mean, you may not know what it means eventually, but even not to know, understand the sure. how how what a dangerous uh, a moment it is. You know, it's a very um, yeah. So, and the other thing that I will say is that for me, very interesting is that now in Hyderabad, you know, if you look at uh, the political situation, what's so interesting is that we don't have this kind of communal tension. This articulation, this language. But what's happened to the Muslim community is that because of, uh, if there is any bomb blast, you know, if there's any terror attack, if there's anything, immediately Muslim boys are picked up from the old city. So it's really become a state uh, versus community issue now. So I was thinking how things have also changed, you know, in the, uh, in the interim as to how, for example, Muslims see themselves or how Hindus see themselves. Now, um, even though Ovesi's son is still in power, the Majlis is 
the party is still in power. Uh, his son, Akbaruddin, is still making hate speeches, being sent to prison. Uh, while all that is going on, actually what has changed uh, within the community and in the city is also very interesting. Yeah. For me, like you said, the riot sequence, the riot breaking out pretty much on camera and you're all there recording it. And uh, again, the kind of access that you're given, you know, to be on the dais next to the politician when they are making hate speeches, um, are among the things that I find the most shocking and, and, and strangely the most compelling, you know, as, as things that stay back, you know, with you after watching the film. And uh, also, um, the testimonies of the women, where they talk about such brutality with such a deceptive sense of calm which is what frightens you, you know, which is what, what really, really frightens you. And like you said, you're in the middle of something, in the midst of something, and you don't really realize how violent it actually is or, or what it's actually leading to. So, yeah, I mean, I think I'll just take a few questions and maybe you know, continue this conversation. So. Hi. Uh, just to add to this subject, having seen the film, I could relate to these riots which have been at uh, Baba Budangiri Hills every year. Uh, what disturbs me is this being a film which was made 30 years ago, and uh, at Baba Budangiri Hills it's still happening. And it's the same political parties which are involved, the RSS, uh, through its speeches. Uh, what's disturbing is, though we are aware it's the political parties which are trying to take advantage of this kind of a situation. Uh, what, what could we probably do to change it? I really, I really don't know. I'm sorry, I really can't answer that. I think it's a... Uh, no, I, I think it's, it's a collective thing. At, at, at very many levels, I think people have to figure out how to tackle this, or how to deal with it. It can't be... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that uh, sort of secular political groups have uh, managed to make a dent. I don't know that they've been very successful. You know? um, I mean, I, what I find interesting, if I just look back at Hyderabad and uh, see what's happening there, that it was so clearly, uh, I mean, keeping the communal tension, keeping a lid on it, was really a bargain that the Telugu Desam Party and the Majlis forged. You know, so they, when they decided that there'd be no more riots, there were no more riots. You know, so it's not as if people get up and uh, start randomly doing things. You know, so I think the. It's, it's really at, at many levels that this has to be addressed. You know, there was a, when we were filming, I, I met a SP uh, police officer who, who told me, you know, if we really want to control things, we can do it in 24 hours, right? So it's the will. I mean, so if you have sort of failure at a administrative level, you have impunity at the political level, you have, I mean, so many things. You know, I'd rather, I think, uh, press for this kind of structural, you know, so that they take responsibility, because I really don't know what we're going to do with people. I'm, I'm at a loss there. That how do we really get people to... Um, I don't know if any of you have been in a riot or have been attacked or been bashed up, any of you? It's not easy, you know. I've been uh, beaten up and uh, I think that this moment when your attacker is actually attacking you, physically, and uh, it's, a, it's very bizarre because we're strangers to each other, you know? And actually, and these were all young guys, you know, young men, and, and you can even feel their terror and their, uh, before they actually get past you. With that first blow, then they get into the swing of things. But there is this horrible moment, you know, and what kind of appeal? I mean, you, you try and say something, you try and, but it's a very peculiar, uh, peculiar thing. I mean, this capacity for violence and uh, to act on it, so that's really, for me, an area I can't, I, I'm, re I'm really cl clueless. So I'd prefer to um, put energy into, you know, this kind of thing, which is actually they're supposed to be doing this. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, 
no, uh, I think maybe few of us witnessed the 1984 uh, yeah. riots very closely in Delhi. I, I was very much trying to save a person from being killed by uh, a group of people who had come from outside, and I knew that they were not from our, our colony, our, our residential colony, that they were outsiders. And uh, where we lived uh, was right next to, you know, where Haryana starts. So, you know, these truck drivers from Punjab, they, they were trying to come into our colony to, uh, you know, find uh, shelter. But then there were groups coming out. Anyway, that was just to say uh, that, yeah, I mean, we witnessed that very closely. But uh, I, uh, I saw your film. Uh, I, I don't know when you first screened it in Delhi, but maybe uh, I was wondering if, we, if you screened it before 1984. Uh, no, but very early on, I saw your film. 86, maybe. 86, yeah. So yeah, I uh, and I and I felt that it had a huge, a huge impact. And and even at that time, then I was watching it again today. I I liked the last poem, you know, despite uh, because it. Uh, it kind of I remember maybe I'm sort of uh, trying to remember what it meant as a young student watching this film and how it equipped you to look at a riot and uh, you know it kind of prepared you to see uh, you 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 know you you could be told I mean all sorts of things but you actually saw you went through the whole thing you know in this film and you saw how uh, you know things are constructed how hate speeches are done etc. And I, I, I mean, I did, I did not really uh, have so much a problem as you yeah. <laughs> seem to be having. In fact, I really uh, like this, uh, not just the poem, the film. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I haven't, uh, we haven't seen some work like this, uh, you know, uh, which is, I, I don't remember seeing anything like this that has been made in India, which is, uh, which is right there at the right time, and I think that's why the, your film has been talked about a lot from from the people who watched it. Because not many things, you know, they people filmmakers would come later on, and then they would, you know, uh, record what what had happened, etc. But right here, and then of course Rakesh does it uh, later on in Final Solution. But um, during that time in 1986, we we hadn't seen anything like this, so it was really uh, very, very uh, impactful. I mean, I don't have, uh, I can't remember exactly what the discussion was at that point of time, but we had just uh, also gone through 1984, and, and maybe, uh, you know, so that those times were very, uh, very turbulent. Well, things were happening one after the other, and it had a lot of impact. That's what I remember. That's, that's all I wanted to say. No, and if I may add a point here, this entire thing that you mentioned about, the conflict within, let's say, um, a person who's going to attack you, or, or that entire power relationship that two people share at that moment is something that I personally experienced during 2002. Of course, I was not in the middle of the riot. But it just so happened that I had to travel from Delhi to Trivandrum, taking the Rajasthani, and then the riots broke out. So we were passing through Gujarat with trains running with their shutters down, uh, stations with their with all the lights on, but the cities with the lights switched off, and police everywhere, police and army and all kinds of paramilitary forces everywhere. And because we were going on a shoot and this had happened, we just decided to get down at Baroda station. And we said, okay, maybe we should shoot a bit. And we did. And all these guys, the paramilitary guys were kids. You know, they were 18, 19, 20, they were boys, you know, little boys with these rifles or whatever they were carrying. So there was one, an element of fascination with somebody filming you and also the thing of power that, oh, what exactly are they doing? And, and, and the kind of uh, apprehension that you feel to, that let's say we felt towards them, that, you know, are they going to do something on camera? Are they going to tell us not to shoot? So it was one of those moments where, you know, this guy is actually afraid, but he might attack you and so on. So it's... Uh, yeah, just one memory that I have. 84, yes, Nishta, <laughs> I too was there in Delhi. And, um, yeah, uh, any more? Priya. Okay. Um, uh, probably digging into details, but I was just wondering about, uh, it's actually, a documentary is quite balanced, and that was actually 
better for me to digest uh, uh, especially because many a times people try to uh, not do that well um, uh, so one probably very fine thread going across the documentary was uh, where uh, Sikh uh, trying to um, tell wh why are people running, we are not doing anything. And then there are these uh, Indira Gandhi's uh, floats, cutouts, which were um, short and everything. So could you comment on that piece a little? No, I think the thing about the, no, there's no direct connection as such, but uh, the thing with this, uh, the Sardar, the Sikh person who came up actually. No, I mean, what was fantastic is he's actually telling Narendra, why are you talking such rubbish? Why are you saying these things, you know? I mean, that is for me the amazing thing. And then they pushed him off the stage, but he was saying, what are you doing, you know? He says, na, kaise baata kar rahe sab aap aap? You know, and then, and why are we afraid? He appeals first to people, you know, saying like, let's not run, don't do anything. and. Uh, and then he actually addresses Narendra and says, what are you saying? You know, why are you, uh, you know, these kind of things that you are saying? You know? So, no, there was no direct connection. The thing is that through a passage of time that the next elections really had happened after her uh, assassination. So, that the, those posters are really to give you a sense that time has moved. You know, we, we, we are six months down the road. Uh, in that sense, that that was the objective of that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah Deepa, that was just uh, very profound and uh, like completely devastating, of course. And it's kind of document that you have, which was resurrected, like you said, and for a reason, I'm sure. You know, um, but um, I mean, I was just wondering how you, you know, there's so many levels at which you must have dealt with it in terms of being there and shooting it and what that meant and looking at the image later and what that meant and then losing it and then finding it and you know and then now showing it at a different time and it's it, I mean I think that it just sort of adds to the it adds each time you know a certain kind of meaning um, at least which to me is quite evident watching it and it's quite layered because of that as well because, I mean, this is not a film that was made recently. And um, there is something about it that is from a different time. Because also the long form, um, the voice, the, the, the way in which you've tried to make sense of it. And I was wondering if you could actually talk about how you did that then. You know, like how did you kind of structure this kind of, um, your grappling with what this moment meant? whether you were in it, whether you were out of it, and um, how could you even, you know, how can you, how can you, you know, how do you do that? How do you make this form so prescient um, for yourself? Um, and then, of course, you know, you see it later and you have all kinds of thoughts and that's, that's a whole other thing. But I was just wondering, you know, how do you actually structure meaning or structure um, and intellectual position or a, a way of seeing how, how you know, how, where do all of this, where does all of this come? It, it's come together. I'm just wondering whether you have any thoughts on how that happened. If I was to break this down, I, I think the first level of actually shooting, you know, recording and um, being in a place and very unlike anything I had done before because Earlier, it's, you know, you research a subject, you know where you're going, you know your, whom you're going to talk to, you know how it's going to be set up. This is, you're literally, you arrive and uh, you shoot, you know. Uh, and yet, um, so I mean, Navroz and I would have uh, sort of many conversations about this because the thing is that um, even though we were doing that, Right? And we are going to, and we're meeting people who are like in, in extremists, really, you know, people who have lost somebody or, you know, terrible pain. Uh, how um, uh, film so that, um, you know, so that this, they feel uh, heard or, or, or that there's some attention being paid to them, that's, 
not just like reportage, you know, it's not just that we're in there, you shoot and run. Though we had very little time with people because of the curfew and you had to get out. So that was a huge challenge, you know, how do you create a practice where you can somehow be with people even though it's a brief period, you know. And um, I, I don't know what you feel, but I really feel that uh, Navroza's camera in this film is just fantastic amazing. It's, Absolutely. It is just such a uh, intimate, affectionate and respectful camera, you know, and and I really feel that um, lots of films have been made on uh, riots and victims, but I've not seen this, uh, this quality of how, uh, you know, you just see people, I think, and that is very much him, you know, in the sense of but I think getting there and I would sort of talk to people or sit with people or just be silent with people or something. Because it's all very overwhelming and uh, uh, very hard to take, you know. But he had this capacity, you know, to just, uh, to just do that, you know, to get those kind of uh, images. So that's at one level. Um, but also, while filming, for example, this idea of, of, of telling a story of a city that has changed, which was very much, um, very painful for me, because the Hyderabad I grew up in, you know, I still, I speak Dakhani fluently, uh, you know, it was a city where every Moharam I would go to my Shia friends' houses, and you know, they have the recitation, uh, which goes on for three nights, and I mean, so many things, we knew exactly, it was such an intimate, different kind of way of living. And if you notice in the film, that really struck me, you know. You, if you close your eyes, you don't know if they're Hindu or Muslim. Because they all speak Dakhani. And today, Hindus speak Telugu. That's a very big difference that's changed in the city, right? So, that's, that was at that level. Now, if we're talking about how do you make sense of it, as I said, the we wanted this film, she said it's very even-handed, no? The person at the back, it's very objective, etc. And not objective, but even-handed. See, the thing is that we wanted the film to be screened in Hyderabad, in the old city. So you really had to have a film that spoke to both communities and that it could not be dismissed as this body arithmetic, ke, achha, itne Hindus mare, itne Musliman mare, that kind of logic, you know. So how to do that? And the other thing is that I didn't I realize that you can't set up these politicians. Uh, you know, you can't make fools of them. You can't set, even set them up as. You have to take their logic and what they're saying seriously. You know, so you you can't do whatever. Michael Moore, yeah. me Roger Moore. That's a slip for sure. Almost. Uh, so you can't do that. You know? like this because you still have people who, um, you know, there are huge majlis followers in Hyderabad, right? So you have to come at it from another position. So, uh, so those long speeches, for example, you know, and so what is OAC doing? And I felt it's not just hate speeches, but he's recalling a kind of Muslim past that actually they never had. Hum sab nawab the, no, everybody was not a nawab. Undino may also Musliman were driving rickshaws, but this whole lost notion of you know, uh, you know the way he speaks like we lost our position, we lost our uh, you know we ruled this country. What is that? That appeal to what kind of Muslimness? Or what is he appealing to? Right? How do you? So in there were all these kinds of uh, things, you know. And yet, at a real politic level, how do you bring in what's going on? I mean, the whole Chandra Babu Naidu, the whole, I mean, sorry, NTR, and uh, you know that whole thing. What was going on, right? And one thing I felt that uh, you know the curfew sequence, which even today is my favorite sequence, is really because how do you, you just be with people and you get just get a texture of what that's like? You know, you're under curfew for 28 days. Right? That's another thing in this film. I mean, we, for the first time we realized that the kind of structural violence that curfew imposes on people in a riot situation, you know. So there were, uh, it was all many, many, many things, not just, 
Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, and now when I uh, this thing of looking at it again uh, at this moment and things, and uh, I think I also love the curfew uh, sequence because it's a way somehow as filmmakers to show some kind of empathy. You know, uh, sharing that time with them because it's not just about going in there and then the. Uh, either attacked or in pain, or you're getting a testimony out of them, but just sharing that somewhere you make a space where, and this business of the radio, you know, and how all this news that comes from radio, and, and how people hang on to that because it's the only thing way of understanding what's going on. I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, no, and I yeah. think yeah, um, this film manages to do something really, really get gets a. Very fine balance, I think, between you, Navroz, and everybody else who was on the shoot, with everybody you were shooting with. So, one, not to give them their space, to respect them, and and and, and that entire thing of of, of um, being with people in this very very violent situation, whether it's a curfew or immediately after an, an attack and everything, and give them the space so you're not objectifying them as mere victims or mere Muslims or Hindus or whatever, and they emerge as uh, you can see the kind of kind of. Uh, Dilemma it is for you, you as filmmakers to engage with somebody whom you ne don't necessarily know in that situation and give them their space and it's there, you know. It uh, really is there in the film and I think that's a very, it, it's very, it's something very special about this film. You know? we, we need to have a much longer discussion about this film but uh, we are running out of time. I think I'll take one, oh he's cut my mic off. Okay. <laughs> One question from maybe a student or a younger person. Yes, please. Yeah. Mm. Hi. I wanted to find, you talked about uh, screening the film in the old city. So I wanted to know um, in the aftermath of all this, when you just finished the film and you screened it, what sort of response did you get? Uh, actually, very emotional responses. I think um, both uh, Hindus and Muslims in the old city were uh, uh, quite uh, actually stunned in a sense uh, because one thing that was very moving and I found it in both communities was that they, the, the sameness of, of what had happened to the other community and I think that really shocked them. Okay. Oh, in ke saath bhi aisa hi hua. You know, because that didn't figure in the that uh, they, 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 it, they thought it's just exclusive to their experience. But I think that was a, a modest, but I think a very powerful, uh, a powerful bridge, you know, something to open up people <coughs> in that sense. And uh, I think also the speeches were very interesting because it's one thing when you're in a public meeting and uh, listening to something, in a different way. But once it's contextualized in this way, the kind of meaning that they were trying to make of these speeches was very interesting. So, yeah, I think it was a very... Uh, I, I would say that objective of trying to start a conversation or at least get people thinking about what's happening, that the film did achieve in the screenings. And, and also what uh, moved me a lot was there was a lot of um, real grief about uh, you know this uh, that's where the title also comes from of you know kya hua is shahar ko you know that feeling like what is I mean I heard it so often but from a place of grief and loss not from a place of anger because the communities lived I mean it was, it was so tight you know the way and so interdependent also. So, those conversations also occurred, which I thought was very strong. Yeah. So, I think, uh, fortunately, we'll have to wind up here. Thanks very much, Deepa. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. So, we take a 10-minute break, and then we reassemble. And